Well, for me, I was one of those uh, kids that wanted to do it from from a pretty young age. I uh, had that goal. I'm not sure exactly where it was, somewhere in grade school. And uh, at that time, it was really one of, of probably many, you know, career aspirations, along with uh, playing in the uh, NBA or something like that, which didn't work out at five foot nine. But um, but about junior high school, I started to uh, to get a little bit more serious about the idea. Had a librarian from my uh, middle school who, on a career day, helped me to look up NASA's address and write to NASA, asking about how to become an astronaut. And I got a brochure back uh, from them, telling me that you know you need to study math, science, or engineering, and talked about the requirements for a pilot astronaut, which is what appealed to me the most. And uh, so that's when I really started to set my sights on one of the service academies um, and uh, just kind of took it step by step from there. Well, the little bit that I got to fly of the shuttle, which was just about 30 seconds flying around the, the heading alignment cone prior to rolling out on final, it, it flew almost exactly like the STA. Just felt like I was, I was back in that airplane. You're partly so focused on the task that by the time we were wheels down, I sort of went, I can't believe we just just did all that, you know, for real. But at the same time, I remember as we were coming around looking down uh, towards the, uh, we had some clouds down below and towards the vehicle assembly building and trying to pick out the runway and just thinking, I can't believe this is like the real one because I'd seen that picture so many times from the, from the shuttle trainer. As far as the actual uh, launch, a couple things surprised me. Um, one was the engine start. I, I thought it seemed a little bit more chaotic in the vehicle in terms of the vibration when the engine started than I remembered from, from our sim. So that initial uh, startup from, uh, to 100% on the engines is about six seconds prior to launch. And uh, so I remember noticing that the vehicle just shook in a different way than I had expected. And then when the solid rocket boosters lit, it felt like a bomb had gone off under your seat, you know, and, and uh, basically that's what happened. Six million pounds of thrust, you know, instantly it's a, uh, an immediate hit. There's small, you know, jets that fire as, as the SRBs come off, but also we have uh, forward jets that fire to protect our windows from any debris coming off the solid rocket boosters. So you see this big flash out the front windows as they come off. And then it gets really smooth. Um, it's pretty, pretty uh, rumbly inside the vehicle while you're on the solids. And then once you get off them, you're sort of on, uh, on railroad tracks. It's quite a ride. The, the, uh, the 3Gs, you, you, you weigh three times what you normally weigh. And of course, you got this suit on with different valves and things. So stuff's poking into you. It's really not bad, but, um, but you're aware that you're heavy. And then you go instantly from, from weighing three times your normal weight to weighing nothing and floating up in your seat and straps and you know all kinds of stuff you know books floating up and dust comes up and so it's uh, it's really uh, neat how quick that happens well I had high expectations and they were all exceeded <laughs> they really were um, there was very little that I felt really surprised by I think uh, our, the veterans on our crew made a real effort to every time we were in a simulator talk about what it's gonna be like living up there, what it's like operating in zero-g, things that surprise them on their flights. So, so we were, I think, really well prepared by those folks. And then we were fortunate enough on our return, we came back over to the U.S. Um, for our landing. So we hit uh, sunrise on orbit somewhere around the west coast, but we really couldn't see the ground because it was still dark on the ground. And about the time we were over Wyoming, we picked up the sunrise on the ground, looking right down on the Rockies. It was absolutely gorgeous, and and uh, we were at 40 miles high. We'd been at 200 miles for 16 days, so it looked really low and fast <laughs> at 40 miles high, which was kind of funny. I mean, it's very fulfilling to to have been blessed to go up and fulfill that dream. You know, to have experienced what I'd hoped to experience all these years, knowing that um, that each step of the way you're just very fortunate to make it to the next the next gate you know there's health issues there's professional uh, career uh, things that can come up that can divert you so so I I just sort of marveled I mean even to the last minute I knew that anything can happen and it was nothing to take for granted so I felt very very uh, thankful 